If you're a dividend investor, one of the most important metrics that you can calculate is the dividend growth rate. This metric allows you to assess whether or not a particular company is increasing its dividend payments to shareholders. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how it is that you can calculate the dividend growth rate using two different methods. Okay, so there are two formulas that you can use to calculate the dividend growth rate for any particular company. The first formula that you can perform is the Kager formula, also known as the compounded annual growth rate formula. As you can see, the formula for this is quite simple. So all you need to do is take the ending value divided by the beginning value, and then you take that to the power of one times the number of years. After that, all you need to do is subtract that number by minus one, multiply that by a hundred. So that way you get it as a percentage, and this will give you the Kager growth rate of a particular dividend. The other formula which is also quite commonly used is the percentage change formula so rather than taking into account compounding into the growth formula this just takes the straight growth in terms of one period versus another so all you need to do for that is take the difference between the new value the most recent value minus the previous value and then you divide that by the previous value obviously you can also multiply this by a hundred so that way you get the answer as a percentage and now now that you know the formulas, what I want to do is I want to show you step by step examples of this calculations. So that way you can visually see this for yourself and have an easier time understanding both of these formulas. So to start off and keep things simple, we're going to start with the percentage change formula, which you can see right here. What I've done is I've set up this template, which we're going to use to be able to calculate the dividend growth rate in this case for Apple, but you can change it to any company that you want because the template is completely dynamic and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need to have the dividend data so that we can put that information right here and then subsequently perform the dividend growth rate. For that, we're going to take advantage of the Y Sheets add-on. So this is an add-on that works on Google Sheets and Excel. And in this case, we're going to use the Y formula. We're going to use dividend as the parameter and these are going to be the periods. There's different tutorials we have on our channel that you can check out that are going to show you how to use the Y Sheets add-on. But in this case, the way to do it is very simple. So you enter all this different information and now we have the dividend paid for this particular periods of time. Once you have this information, then the next step is obviously to calculate the growth rate. So we're going to use the percentage change formula for that. And we're going to start right here because there's no previous value right here. This is the latest value available. So now we're going to enter the formula. So we're going to take the most recent value minus the previous value, put this in brackets. So that way this operation gets performed first. And then after that, divide this by the previous value. And then you can turn this into a percentage. So that way you can see the dividend growth rate. So in this case is a positive dividend growth rate of 7.80%. After that, you can simply drag the formula across. So that way, this calculation gets performed for all the subsequent years. So as you can see, the calculation is quite simple. And using Y sheets, you can also add additional metrics. So for example, we could also add the EPS growth and the payout ratio. Instead of calculating those values manually, we could use the Y's function for that as well. So we're going to enter this as the symbol. These are going to be the parameters. And then these are going to be the years. And as you can see, we get the values right here. These values are calculated calculated based on the data that's available on Y sheets. So this allows you to have a more thorough analysis in terms of the dividend metrics of this particular company, which is Apple. But the cool thing about this and what I wanted to share with you is that you can simply change the company ticker and all of the data will update for you. So in this case, we're going to change it to Coke. And as you can see, we get the data right here, which we can use for our analysis. Now what I've done is I I've set up the exact same structure that I had before, except now, as you can see, I changed the company ticker to Walmart. And here we get the dividend payments per share for Walmart on a historical basis. And now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the four year Kager or the four year compounded annual growth rate. To do this, this is the formula that we need to use. So we take the ending value, which in this case is the 2022 value 
value divided by the historical value. So in this case, we're looking at 2018, but we could also change it to whatever other value we want. In this case, I just wanted to compute the four year one. And then after that, we take that to the power of one divided by the number of periods. So in this case, we're taking the Kegel for four years. So this is why it's four. And then after that, all we need to do is subtract the value by minus one. Once you do that, you get the Kager of 1.87%. And this is basically the compounded growth rate from this dividend payment period to this particular one. So if you were to take this rate and apply it to this number on a yearly basis, you would see that you would approximately get this number right here. I figure this would be better if you could visualize it. So let's do that together. So all you need to do is you're going to take this times one plus the growth rate in this case we're going to make sure to lock this in and that's going to give you our result and now what we need to do is just the same thing so one and now all we need to do is drag it to this number right here. And you can see that roughly we get the same answer as here. So this is how the Kager works versus the percentage change formula, which just takes the percentage change between two different values. Now, just to clarify which method is best to use under different circumstances, the Kager is best to use when you're comparing the difference in the growth rate between two different periods that are are longer than two specific years. So in this case, when you do, for example, the dividend growth rate of four years, this is the perfect situation to use the Kager. But if you were only comparing the growth rate between 2022 and 2021, here it would be perfect to use the percentage change formula, which we use right here. And that is because this is a simple percentage change between two time periods, as opposed to calculating the percentage change between the value and 2022 versus 2018 for example so this is what is generally recommended and this is generally best practice now you know how to calculate the dividend growth rate like a professional so be sure to use this knowledge so that you can make good investment decisions for yourself and those people that you most care about if you've enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification zone so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this it's going to allow you to take your your investing game to the next level. I'll see you in the next one.